In this lecture, we're talking about the second self-mastery skill, which is in fact the most difficult to learn. It is about intuition. Since time began, man was given this gift of intuition, especially when man was starting about four million years ago, when the Homo habilis and Homo erectus were roaming the earth. They did not have any science to help them. So they were given the faculty of intuition to navigate their lives, when to run, when to fight, how to survive, how to thrive. Intuition was their main ally. But over time, I guess, as science came in, we began more to rely on our rational, cognitive thinking faculties, and somehow have been able to repress our intuitive gifts. My first experience in intuition was when I was a little boy. I was watching my mother and my aunts play my jungle house. And suddenly my mother stood up, startled and afraid. And she turned to me and said, your sister Beth was thrown out of the swing and she's bleeding. Of course, we were all flabbergasted because we, we were not seeing anything. Five minutes later, they were carrying my sister. In fact, her head was bleeding. I began to ask my mother about that. And she said, no, uh, something flashed in my mind. Later on, I would know that as intuition. And then as a boy, as I was getting older, I began to be interested in my aunt who, was, who came around telling fortunes of everybody in the family compound. And I was wondering, because there are only 52 cards in a deck, and she was saying all sorts of things. I said, how can you, how can you weave all of these stories when you just have 52 cards? She said, well, you lay the cards together and you try to put them together, a meaning emerges from your mind. And I would learn, of course, that's another way of doing intuition. So I began asking her to teach me and I began reading books about it. And when I was about 10, I decided I'll do fortune telling in the neighborhood too. So I went to a nearby variety store and I told the owner, uh, I'll tell your fortune for one bottle of Coke in Hopia. And she humored me and I'm beginning to tell her fortune. And then something flashed in my mind because I saw in the cards, two queens, two of clubs, which means secret, five, which means marriage, seven, it just flashed in my mind, Sunday. And so I blurted out to her, two of your daughters are getting secretly married this Sunday. She almost fell out of her chair. Needless to say, after then, she would always seek my fortune telling. I think I did not nurture that very well in school, but sometime later, I began to learn from people who were dabbling in the paranormal, and we began to learn many techniques and tools on intuition, which I will be talking about in this lecture. So intuition is getting to know something, and I don't know why you know it. In Latin, the, the phrase, uh, the word intuitive means to look within. It's something that does not come from the senses. It comes from an internal faculty. And somehow we're all connected to this universe and we're able to pick up information and knowledge from the universe. What do other experts say? What do other people say about intuition? Other definitions, aside from knowing without exactly knowing how you know, Spiritual bliss and enlightenment, I guess these are the things that saints and the Buddha experience. A physical sensation to yet unknown internal external stimuli. Precognition or clairvoyance of things to come. Instant recognition of the right answer to a complex question. More mundanely, it is called a hunch, a gut feeling. The truth manifested by an intuitive experience cannot be forced or conjured at will. Intuition is hard to learn as a cognitive subject. There are two facets in intuition. First, one deals with the self and the self's ability to probe that self. Second, one deals with the self contemplating or looking upon its world. Both are crucial for self-mastery. Scientists explain intuition merely as a very quick connection of the millions of neural pathways in the brain. What do the other experts say? Francis Vaughan says they are experiences which are commonly known as intuition, which also include following discovery and invention, inspiration in art, creative problem solving, perception of patterns and possibilities, feelings of attraction and aversion, picking up vibes, knowing or perceiving through the body, 
It also includes the paranormal qualities of clairvoyance or having a vision of the future, which is the same as precognition, knowing the future in advance, telepathy or transfer of thoughts from one mind to another. Retrocognition is actually looking at a past event and recognizing it as having happened. Intuition has four levels of awareness. There's the physical level, the emotional level, the mental level, and the spiritual level. The physical level is when you experience bodily sensations and you don't know what's causing those the heat in the body, the cold in the body, but the reality, the truth will manifest itself later. And then you, you say, ah, so there's connection between the physical ailment, maybe uh, your stomach is acting up and you, you feel afraid, or maybe suddenly your head ache, or maybe suddenly your hair stood up. So these are all physical manifestations that there's an event out there that's affecting you. Emotional level, when in fact you could relate to somebody without actually seeing them. During the Vietnam War, a lot of mothers were actually going to the armed forces of the U.S. and say, you know, my son died. And the army would say, no, 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 uh, your son's still very much alive. Two weeks later, the U.S. Army will tell the mother that in fact your son died. The mental level, this is the visionary. Among ancient tribes, if they see that a person has this ability to be a visionary, then they separate the person among the American Indian tribes. Because that person is so crucial for the tribe, that person will tell them uh, where the buffalo herd is roaming, and that person could be the medicine man, the healer. And then their spiritual level, uh, something that, as I said earlier, the saints, people who meditate, do a lot of enlightenment meditation, uh, they experience this. Philip Goldberg, author of The Intuitive Edge, discusses many phases of intuition. There's discovery intuition, creative intuition, intuitive evaluation, operative intuition, predictive intuition, and illuminative intuition. In his Harvard Business Review article on how senior managers think, Daniel Eisenberg published his findings on how intuition is used by business executives. Eisenberg claims that senior managers use intuition in five distinct ways to synthesize isolated bits of data and experiences into an integrated picture, to perform well-learned behavior rapidly, to intuitively sense when a problem exists, to check on the results of rational analysis, to bypass in-depth analysis and move rapidly to come up with a plausible solution. Western Agor talks about how top executives make important decisions. When a high level of uncertainty exists, when little previous precedent exists, when variables are less scientifically predictable, when facts are limited, when facts don't clearly point the way to go, when analytical data are of little use, when several plausible alternative solutions exist. So how do we nurture intuition? I'm laying out here different methods. Dream interpretation, something that we all possess. So we are all intuitive, and one way to go about it is dream interpretation. Doodling, guessing, meditation, detachment and stillness, crystal ball casing, and daydreaming. Now all of this happened when the brain is at the alpha state of being. It's at an altered state of mind. You can do this through meditation, and some people do it through hallucinogenic drugs, some do it through alcohol, some do it through sports, some do it through prayers. There are many methods to go from this beta level, brain level, which is very, very conscious, to that altered state of mind. And this is where intuition comes and sets in. So dreams are action metaphors. For example, running away from monsters or evil people is an attempt to escape an unwanted situation. Falling is a metaphor of being out of control. Drowning is a metaphor for getting overwhelmed. Crossing a river or a canyon is a life-changing decision to go from one situation to another. Losing teeth is a metaphor for aging, it may mean that one has a growing level of responsibility and accountability. It's gaining some wisdom, getting more authority and control. Flying is a metaphor for being independent. Soaring the sky may represent freedom. Not finding one's shoes and therefore unable to go out is a metaphor for restrictions at home. The exact interpretation of the dream would depend on the context of the dreamer 
and the emotions surrounding the dream episode. Dreams can come in symbolic forms like eagles, butterflies, bats, snakes. There are many, many symbols that have come to us through the ages. And these are called archetypes, like the warrior king, the empress, the hermit. But these are images or archetypes that are quite symbolic. Then we have other methods like doodling. I use doodling to make sense out of a large number of facts and figures and innumerable variables in order to come up with the right problem definition and the best possible solutions would be a good way of developing intuition. In dealing with such situation, I try to do the one page what all the complexity is all about. Another method is to practice guessing. You take a pack of cards and you guess whether it's red or black or what number it is or what suit it is. Meditation uh, requires you to go to yourself. Usually people, people go, uh, close their eyes, they're forced to go within themselves. If you open your eyes, you're forced to go out of yourself. So meditation usually requires that you go inside yourself. There's some stillness and calmness, and you begin to slow down your heart rate, slow down your bodily reactions to the external stimuli. And then you allow your mind to expand and see things. Detachment and stillness. I try to be a hovering presence that is simultaneously watching the people acting out of their concerns and listening to all their discussions from a distance. Crystal ball gazing. I was actually taught by the Jesuit priest how to do crystal ball gazing on a good Friday of that. Daydreaming, palm scanning, these are some of the other methods used in intuition.